All right, so we have a little, little different project today. Uh, got a friend of mine who's got this uh, Hoyt uh, Hyper Edge Elite, and um, the cable stops, um, as you can see here, they're nothing more than just a round, just a round uh, peg. Uh, so as the cam rotates around, it um, it uh, it just stops against the uh, cable with just a round peg. So um, I'm gonna make a uh, I'm gonna make a replacement, um, which is gonna have a um, it's going to have a flat edge on it, and it's going to uh, spread the weight out um, instead of across just around around contact point. It's going to have a flat. Um, so um, this particular ball has two stops: one on the top, one on the bottom cam. I'll show you that in a minute. Uh, and these heights are different sizes, uh, so um, so it's not. It's going to be two different stops, one for the bottom cam, one for the top cam. Let me flip the bow around and I'll show you the other stop. They're identified uh, with a different color too. As you can see this one, as you can see, uh, this one is black. And uh, here's the other one. Um, Okay. Um, you know what? I'll I'll put this in the draw board and I'll pull this at full draw and um, I'll show everybody what I mean uh, with with the uh, contact area. All right. As you can see, this top cam, uh, the the bow right now is at full draw. Uh, the top cam, uh, as you can see, the uh, as you can see, the peg here is right up against the cable. Uh, that's, that's the control cable on the Hoyt. And um, let's go down below. And that's the lower cam. And you can see the peg against the uh, bus cable there. So um, I'm going to make some stops and put them on and we'll put the bow back at full draw when we're done all right stick around i started laying everything out um and um thought i was recording and all my work uh realized when i went back to the camera uh, i didn't record the thing so what i'm going to show you i had already done and i'll just go through the setup and the steps that i did uh pretending let's just pretend that I uh, I'm actually doing it again so um, all right all right so like I said this was already done I'm just going through all of the steps um, now because um, I didn't have the camera running at the time when I did everything the first time so um, this is some 60 61 uh, aluminum stock that I had I um, I milled down. There's two different thicknesses. The original stops on the uh, cams. Um, I forget which one is which right now. I got my notes on the other side of the shop, but um, one is thicker than the other. Uh, in other words, it sticks out from the cam wall. Um, forget if the bottom one was a little bit thicker or the uh, top one was thicker. I forget. So these are two identical size pieces. Um, and what I did was everything's locked down here. I set, um, I got a little machinist clamp acting as a stop. And what I went ahead and did was, um, remember earlier I said that the diameter of the uh, factory stops was 300 thousandths. So half of that diameter, uh, 150 back from this edge here puts this on center and then I'm gonna make the um, I'm gonna make the overall length of these here stops six hundred and fifty thousandths long so half of that would be three hundred and twenty five thousand so with my edge finder picked up both edges moved them in 
where it has to be, locked the table down. Uh, went ahead, took my center drill, and center drilled each location. Now, rather than changing the bit every hole, um, and that's, you'll, you'll see, that's why that I have this set up this way. Um, so, I center drilled each hole. If the if did I drill this one, I flip it around, lock it down, drill this one, flip it over, drill that one, and that one. So I, I have all four center drill marks. Did both pieces. Then after all four, after all the center drills were drilled, I came over and I drilled a number 28 drill bit not moving anything just drilled it straight through now the screw that goes through there is a 632nd and if you look in if you look in like a reference book that calls for a number 18 drill bit um, for a clearance hole I find that that's too sloppy. Number 18 is going to be too sloppy. That's why I went with the uh, number 28. Um, this is a 632 screw. This is the size screw which holds the um, stop onto the cam. And that fits much more precise uh, around there. There is no slop in there. So, um, okay, uh, and then I went ahead and took a quarter inch end mill, same thing, put it in, lo lock it down, put a quarter inch end mill, went in 160 thousandths deep, which gives me the clearance for the, the head of the socket head screw, and for both pieces that way flip it over that way and that way and this is where I'm up to now so hopefully we'll have no more recording errors uh, and you can follow along um, as we do the work um, so um, the next step is we'll be starting to mill some of the material away so when we clamp it down in the rotary table we'll just we'll just cut the radius around the outside here and free it from the material so um, I'll bring you back in a little bit when we get that happening milling eventually with an eighth inch end mill um, so I moved the table in the Y direction out so that'll put the the offset of the eighth inch end mill so uh, 62 and a half thousands and then from this edge here I went over a hundred thousands this is going to seem a little, I'm, you'll understand as this develops uh, what we're shooting for here. Um, I've made a few of these stops for some other bows, some Bowtex. Uh, so, I, uh, through my ex experimentation, um, I found this uh, system to work the, the uh, best for me. So, um, I'm going to do the same thing. I will spot a hole I'll use a center drill uh, just put a center mark in each of the locations on both pieces uh, they'll come back I'll drill with an eighth inch drill bit all of the locations and then we'll move the table again and pick up a spot on this side and uh, I think you guys will start seeing where we're heading with this in a little bit so let's get started
Okay, so we're back. Didn't move anything. Only thing different, I put the 8 inch uh, drill bit in. Now I'm going to go back. I'm going to drill all of these through the same all eight times. So uh, sit back and enjoy. Okay, well, off camera I drilled the rest of those holes, as, as you can see, uh, there's a series of uh, two holes on opposite sides of the, um, where the hole and the counterbore for the, sets, uh, for the uh, socket head cap screw is. So that's going to be the, uh, I'm going to mill out with, uh, with an eighth inch end mill. Uh, and that would be the uh, limits uh, to where the uh, to where each slot will be. Um, stopped off at the Victor Machinery Exchange and I went on the way home from work the other day. Picked up a couple of new end mills. Saw my friend Brian over there. Hope you're watching, Brian. And um, all right, so let's get this thing uh, going. This is this whole operation. This whole project is just a series of repetitive operations. Um, so, um, so what I'm going to do is, um, I'm going to start, I'm going to be milling each of these corners into that hole. Um, so, um, let me unlock the, uh, let me unlock this and, um, uh, we'll get milling here. Same thing um, as with the holes. Um, I'm going to go around, flip each piece around, uh, and do each edge. Uh, so I'll spare everybody that. Um, I'll bring this back again when I got all of the ends cut out. Okay, so when we left off, um, I was milling out these here with slots. Um, in the video that you saw me milling it, I took it in uh, like uh, three passes. Uh, after the second one, I just took it one full pass straight through, sprayed a little WD-40 on there as a lubricant, and um, milled out all eight slots now. So, uh, next what we'll be doing is we'll be milling out a slot connecting these two holes. So, I think you guys might be uh, seeing where we're going with this. Um, I changed things around on the mill a little bit. Let me zoom back out here for you. Okay. So I put my uh, I put my stop over here. I I took the uh, toolmaker's clamp off. Um, 
Let me get this out of the way. Okay. Um, and um, so what I what I'll do is same thing, just repetitive steps over and over again. Um, the y-axis has not changed um, since we drilled those um, eight holes in each piece, and um, I set the I set the stops on my x-axis. So what I'll be doing is I'll be milling down. I'll bring the turning it on, and I will mill straight through. And I got the stop set on my table. Mill across to here, mill that out, flip the piece over, and do the back side. Yeah. And then switch pieces here. So um, let's get going. I'm going to take a, a partial cut for this first one. The WD-40. Okay, I'm And that's how it begins to stop. You know, looking at this, um, this slot, the back of this slot, the cutter here is going to be dangerously close to my parallel. So rather than cutting all the way through, I'm going to do a partial cut and I'll just flip the material, I'll just flip the stock over. So instead of making four cuts, one, two, three, and four, I'll make eight cuts. It'll take me a little bit longer, but... I don't want to damage my end mill or my parallel, so I'll do that off camera. Okay, back again. Um, so um, I milled out these here slots, and uh, so now the next operation will be um, I'll get my rotary table. And um, I'll, I'll put that down on the uh, 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 mill, get that centered, and I'm going to make up a um, I'll make up a pallet, which uh, which these will um, screw down to. I'll attach each I'll attach this to a pallet that's uh, centered on the rotary table, and it'll be centered around this counter bore here. I'll offset the table, eighth inch end mill, and I'll rot this will rotate around and connect this slot to the slot here. Again, like this whole operation was, it was a, it was a it was a, a series of repetitive operations. When this is done, this will give me four sets of stops. Uh, the amount of work to do one stop, uh, a little bit more when you can have uh, four sets. So, um, and then after each one is done, flip it over. So this will stay relative 
the center of the rotary table will stay relative to the mill and I'll just move each part so I'm hoping that makes sense um, if not I, I think it'll become evident um, once I get the rotary table up on on the mill and we actually get going All right, where we left off, we had the uh, we had both pieces uh, machined with the poles, the counterbores, and the slots. Um, so what I went ahead and did off camera, it's a sacrificial piece of aluminum here. Um, I'm going to make a pa this is a pallet. I just drilled. Um, I just did my transfer punches transferred two holes over, um, drilled and tapped them for a 632 screw, uh, and then this will get fastened down to the rotary table um, after I center the rotary table under the spindle of the mill. So um, let's get that centered. I'll show you how we do that. Got my wiggler in there. some white axes, lower this down a little bit, let me bring it in a little closer there. I don't know how easy that's going to be to see. Alright, that's uh, the center of the spindle is centered with the axis of the rotation on the rotary table. Okay, so next what I'll do is Next, what I'll do is I'll uh, I'll hold this pallet down. This will be again centered right where that bolt is. All right. I've got a couple of hold downs. Hold this down here. And um, then we'll offset the uh, we'll offset, I guess, the uh, y-axis, the, the amount I need to create the uh, radius around here. So let me get everything fastened down, and I'll bring you back in a little bit. Okay, so where we left off, the rotary table was centered. I put the pallet. That's that's. Uh, that's held down to the rotary table. The pallet is centered uh, with this um, one um, screw hole here. So that'll be the that'll be the position that we'll do the the um, that'll be the position where we cut the radius. Well, that was fun. Um, when we left off before, we had the rotary table centered. Um, 
I now attach the pallet to the rotary table. That is also centered around this one hole here, and this will be the individual piece we'll be working on each time, like before. With every operation, we'll take the piece out, rotate it around, uh, and go back to this same work area here. Um, this will give us four pieces when we're done. The other side will give us the other four, uh, same way. Flip them around, flip them around, over, and over. So, the only thing I got left to do here is I have to offset uh, one of the axes. I'm going to offset the Y axis, uh, and that's going to, uh, and that'll give us the radius that we need to um, to mill to continue this uh, slot around. Now, there's more handles. This looks like there's more handles on this thing than a submarine, uh, and uh, not that this ever happened. Now I never got confused on which handles to turn, um, but I put some tape. I'm not touching these axes on the rotary table, um, and the milling machine. Once I set the offset, we will not be touching those. The only, the only, uh, the, the only control that I'll be using is the rotation. And um, this will go around, and I'll con and I'll clean this slot out with the eighth inch end mill until that's uh, free. Um, so um, let me get uh, well, let me get the table offset, and I'll get the eighth inch end mill in there. And when we come back, well, we'll get this thing finished up hopefully. Back in a bit. Okay, well, I offset the y-axis on the table to uh, complete the uh, radius, and I went and I marked, um, I went and marked um, the range, I guess a sector would be the proper term for that. Um, so I will come around and mill this down and cut that slot. And that'll that'll give me the radius and connect uh, these slots here. So um, I'll probably take that down in maybe two or three passes. Take my time with it. Um, so um, I'm going to zoom in a little bit, and we'll see. I'll probably just do one and spare everybody the excitement of this. Little WD-40 for lubrication. I'm going to make a light cut first. Okay, well, 
it takes a while to do. I took my time. Um, you have a lot of time and work invested up to this point, so not to rush it and get the slot clogged up with chips. Uh, even though it's a two fluid end mill, um, you know, got a lot of happening in there, so I take my time. Uh, you know, it would be a shame at this point for the end mill to break off and um, to possibly ruin the piece. So, so I, I clean that up and um, let's remove this. so far. Okay. If you guys can see that. Um, so now flip this over and uh, do that radius and the same thing. Both pieces. When I'm done just got to cut them off, uh, separate them here. I'll have two on, on this. Cut them off, trim them to size, and I'll have uh, four sets. So uh, when I get them all done, I'll be back on camera. Okay, so um, off camera, I uh, finished the uh, machining that and as you can see this is what we're left with uh, actually left with like two pieces okay, the other piece broke free from here okay so now I can flip this around and I got two more that I could do so. So, I got two pieces here. Okay, so now I just have to cut this off and trim them down so they're nice and even. So, um, when I get to that point, I'm gonna do the other. I gotta do the other side. I gotta make the, the thick ones now, and um, I'll get those going. Probably trim the other. The other ones off of the other side. When I get them all done, I'll bring you back and I'll uh, I'll show you how I uh, cut this off and uh, trim them to the same length. So, see you in a little bit. All right. So, this is what we got now. Um, these were the two pieces, and as you could see, this is what we're left with. Okay. So. Um, now I could always mill this all flat and then use this again. Um, I, could use, I can make some more stops at it. Probably another, possibly another four, maybe six. Squeeze something in there. But uh, for now, four is plenty. So um, I'll clean this up and um, we gotta cut these in half, make separate that, make them two, and clean them up so they're nice and symmetrical. So, um, see you in a little bit. Okay, so we're back. Um, all right, so got uh, four sets here, um, and um, I just cleaned them up with uh, a small set of needle files. Um, and some uh, 320 sandpaper just you know polished out some of the uh, tooling marks from the end mill uh, and then uh, the other thing I want to point out what I also did was um, this edge here 
uh, I just broke that edge uh, a bit with uh, with a flat needle file uh, you know, five or six uh, strokes um, this way uh, there's no chance of any burrs on there was, uh, as the cam comes around it's gonna rest up against the cable so I don't know if this is in focus uh, so you know I don't want any chance of any burrs uh, starting to cut into the uh, uh, cable so all right so let me take this one out now this is the uh, this is the top cam and this is in the um, just take a note of which position this is in this is in the uh, C position and uh, this is the longer this is the longer um, um, stop and uh, I put a little blue Loctite on that. I don't know how easy it is to see here. I'm trying to. Yeah. Take a straight edge, line it up with the cam. Okay. Um, so that's in position now. I'm gonna turn the bow around, and we'll do the um, now. We'll do the bottom cam. Let's try to get this in the frame of the camera here, and get everybody in focus. Okay. Same thing. I'll remove this one. Get my hand in there. Let me get a different Allen key for that. There we go. Now, once again, this is also in the C position. And um, we bring this back here, and you could see the difference in the height, like I was saying before. Try and do this in the camera frame here. So, a little bit different. So here is the once again a little blue Loctite. Don't want them loosening up. Trying to do this through the viewfinder is not easy. Okay. Okay. Once again, we'll straight edge, line this up with the cam. rag clean up that excess Loctite okay so when it will be come back um, I'll put the bowl back in the draw board and um, show everybody uh, what I was saying with uh, spreading the load across a larger area. 
All right, so I've got the bowl back in the drawer board. It's a full drawer again. Uh, I'm hand holding this, so this is uh, a little tricky. But uh, this is a view of the upper cam, and you can see the new stop. How it's um, try to hold this with one hand, and so now it's spreading the force instead of just a round peg. It's spreading it across this longer distance, and. Let me just zoom out. I'll bring you down to the lower cam without getting everybody dizzy here. And as you can see here on the lower cam, um, the same principle. So I um, hope my friend likes these. Hope it improves. Hope it gives him the improvement that he's looking for. Um, And um, thanks for watching.